everyone, this is Steve Estrada of the Cast Iron Cookware channel where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today I'm going to show you an easy and inexpensive way to get rid of rust on an old cast iron pan. And I'm going to be doing that coming right up. Okay, before we get started, I just want to say if you enjoyed this channel and would like to see more videos, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, that way you'll be informed of new videos when they come out. That way you won't miss out on anything. So let's get started with our rust removal system. Now everybody doesn't have an electrolysis tank, and it's a little bit complicated to set one up. It's not too bad, but everybody doesn't want to fool with it. And if you just got one piece like this little gem pan I've got right here, this got a pretty good bit of rust. Now it's not bad pitted, but it'll also work with a piece that's pretty bad rusty. We're just going to show you a quick and easy way to do that. Basically, we're going to be using a 50-50 water vinegar bath. I've heard of a lot of people taking a vinegar bath and letting their cast iron soak in it overnight, but I just want to tell you, you don't want to do that because it will actually get rid of the rust and go beyond the rust and start getting rid of some of the iron. And we don't want our pieces to be pitted. Now, you may have a piece that is pitted somewhat, but that's something you just can't do anything about. It's not going to hurt the cast iron for its use. It just has an effect on its collectability and value and, and looks all together. But uh, either way, we just get started with our vinegar bath. We're going to take a 50-50 solution of water and vinegar. We're going to set our piece down in there, and then we're going to let it soak for no more than 30 minutes. I actually like to go about 15 or 20 and kind of watch. If the water starts turning uh, dark, then you know it's working pretty good. Then I'll take it out and rinse it off and check it out. If it's still uh, rusty, I'll put it back in for five or 10 minutes. I do not want to go a long period of time because I want to restore it, not destroy it. So let's get started. Okay, in order to save on my vinegar, I'm just going to use a small tray. One that I know will be deep enough for my cast iron. I mean, you can measure this out exactly if you want to, but I'm basically just going to fill it a little less than halfway with water. And then fill it not quite to the rim because I'm going to be adding my cast iron to it. And just be careful and set it down here really, really slow and easy. There we go, and we got coverage. I'm going to let it set for 20 minutes, and we'll come back. Okay, it doesn't look like there's a lot of action going on. But we're going to go ahead and carry it to the sink. Okay, we got it in here in the sink. I'm going to get some warm water. Take our scrubby and kind of I got a little scrubby that's kind of got some nice little bristles on it. They got it Walmart. And it can kind of get down in those little holes. We'll get most that we can off by rinsing it. And then we'll put it back in the vinegar bath. If this was a skillet, it would be a lot easier. It's not really taking a lot of scrubbing. It's taking more labor trying to get the scrubby down into the, uh, the little cups where the details are at. But the vinegar has really done what it was supposed to. And this is only after 20 minutes. Now if you want to, you can take a toothbrush and work on the little bitty hard to get to sections. All the rust has been loosened up.
we'll take a little toothbrush and kind of work down into the little bitty small places. We're going to put it back in the vinegar bath after we get as much as we can off for about 10 or 15 minutes. Just to loosen up a little hard to get to pieces a little more. Still has a little bit of rust in the little small places. So we're going to stick it back in the vinegar bath another 10 minutes or 15 minutes. We're going to ease it back in. And one thing about vinegar, it's not going to hurt you if you get some on you. Now while I've got it here in the vinegar bath, I'm just going to kind of work it in these little rusty crannies. Just a little bit to kind of help it get a little bit of exposure. Apparently this piece has never been used or seasoned. It looks like it was uh, basically bought as a display piece and they never used it. Or it even could be leftover stock from an old store or something. You never know. So. We're going to come back. I'm going to say we're going to give it about 15 minutes. Okay, at this point we've waited about 15 minutes and we're going to go ahead and uh, carry it back to the sink. It looks like a lot of the little bitty nooks and crannies have been loosened up. So we're going to carry it to the sink and uh, this time instead of using just plain water, we're going to go ahead and add some dish soap to this. I like to use Dawn dish detergent, but you can use anything you want to use, especially at this point. You can use something that's a little bit more harsh if you like, but uh, this is a good time to go ahead and soap it up really good. Use your scrubby to work it in all the little cracks and crannies and you know get all the little nooks cleaned out. The soap really helps when it comes to lifting up the rust that's there in little pockets. There's not a lot of hard elbow grease involved, it's just patience and covering all over the piece, getting all the little hard to get to spots. The vinegar has loosened the rust up to the point where it's not a lot of labor. It's just time consuming. I like to rinse it with about as hot of water as I can stand. A lot of people like to rinse with cold. They say it stops the flash rust. But the way I like to do it, I rinse it with as hot water as possible. That way it'll dry quickly. You dry it off really quick with a towel. And you don't have to worry about getting it so dry that it's just bone dry. Because we want to stop the flash rust. So what we're going to do here, we're going to dry it off quickly along with the pan being hot it'll uh, evaporate really fast before the flash rust has a chance to take hold we will go ahead and apply a layer of seasoning usually with a skillet I'll go ahead and use buzzy wax and I'll coat it with buzzy wax and you still can you can take some buzzy wax and melt it in a small container a little bit and use a baster or a meat baster or a barbecue baster and just kind of cover it all. We're going to be doing that process here in a minute when we season it. Right now I'm going to take some spray grapeseed oil that I've got just in a spray bottle. And uh, grapeseed oil is the foundation for the buzzy wax. You know the buzzy wax has grapeseed oil, uh, also canola oil and beeswax. So we're going to just spray it with some grapeseed oil because it actually works really good with the buzzy wax. We're going to spray it make sure every bit of it is covered. That way we won't have any more rust and we can take our hands and just kind of massage it in all the little nooks and crannies. 
make sure it's covered completely, just kind of rub it over the whole thing. You know, I like to spread over the sink, that way you don't make a big mess. But uh, just take your time, and don't worry if you've got too much on, you're going to wipe off the excess. So just kind of massage it in, and uh, check and make sure you got everything covered. And we were very liberal with the spray. Now we're just going to take a paper towel and do a initial wipe down. Just kind of keep it from being all drippy. So when we put it in our oven to warm it up, it won't be dripping all over inside our oven. We will do a better wipe down here in just a few minutes. And I will say it again, and I know I can't stress it enough, but the number one problem that people have with seasoning is they don't wipe it down good enough. They leave too much excess oil on the piece, which in turn causes lots of problems all the way through the seasoning process. So we're going to wipe it down really, really good before we start the heat treating process. Okay, we have our piece. We're going to go ahead and finish seasoning it. I'm not going to wait till the next video. I'm going to go ahead and do the whole process. So we got it pretty much covered in oil. And what I'm going to uh, what I'm going to do is even though it's still kind of oily, I'm going to go ahead and stick it in the oven and I'm going to get it hot. I'm going to put it at about 200 to 250 degrees. That way uh, the oil will run into all the little crannies and it'll accept the oil better and we'll wipe off all the excess. But right now, let's stick it in the oven and get it warm. Now here's the process I talked about just a minute ago. I'm going to take my Buzzy Wax. I've got a little bit in a small container. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it in the microwave and get it melted. That way I can use my little baster and kind of go through all the little cups and cover it with the baster. This is a great tool to use on gym pans and corn stick pans. After we get it all covered, we're going to go back and use Q-tips and work out all the little nooks and crannies. This is a great little tool to use as well because it is almost impossible to wipe out all the little pieces, especially the detail of these John Wright type gym pans. Now on a skillet, you can just use a rag or a cloth and wipe it out, but these little pieces require a lot of detailed work. So there's a lot of patience involved. Now your Q-tip is not going to hold up that well. So, you know, you might need a handful of them. What I usually do, as soon as one starts deteriorating or getting where it doesn't soak up the oil, I'll get another one. And it may take a handful of them. It may take four or five or six, especially on a piece like this, and it's well worth the time. Now that we've got it sufficiently wiped down front and back, we're going to put it in the oven for one hour at 500 degrees. Okay, we've had one hour at 500 degrees. We've taken it out, and after the first layer, it is really looking good. We use the grapeseed oil on the first layer. And I tell you what, grapeseed oil is a great seasoning medium. That's one thing I really love about Buzzy Wax. That is one of their oils that they use in their base. So, like I said before, I took some Buzzy Wax and I put it in a small container and put it in the microwave and melted it so that I could apply it with a baster and that's what I'm doing right here. I just go on every little cup, kind of swirl it around while the pan is still hot. When I put the pan in for the first round of seasoning, I didn't let it cool completely down. I let it get down to about 200 degrees or so. Uh, that way the oil will run into the little nooks and crannies a lot better and it just applies a lot better when it's hot. 
I hear so many people say that cast iron is porous and you have to heat it up so the pores will open up. That's really not the truth. Actually, cast iron is not porous even though it does have microscopic uh, roughness, I guess you could say. I think what really happens is when the oil gets hot, it gets thinner so it's able to run into those smaller little uh, crevices and lock into it when it polymerizes. So that's one reason why we heat the pan up. Not to open the pores, but to make it where the oil thins out a lot better and it applies so much better. I'm using this baster right here and uh, I have used uh, brushes in the past, but they tend to melt depending on the material. And these basters are made out of uh, a material that handles the heat really well and they don't melt and you can use them over and over. I had an old paintbrush that I used to use and I tell you what, it melted to the point where I had to keep trimming it with a pair of scissors and finally there was nothing left so I decided to do something different. So this baster works really great. After we get our seasoning applied, we go back with a wipe off cloth and wipe off all of the excess that we possibly can. We want to actually wipe it down to the point that it appears to be dry. The number one failure for seasoning is leaving too much oil on. I mean, you can wipe it down and just polish it plumb appearing to be dry and it will still have a microscopic layer. And that's really what you want. You want a microscopic layer that will polymerize very thin. So keep wiping until you feel like it's dry. And then we want to go back with our Q-tips and cover all the little nooks and crannies again. Just take your time. The second time is a lot better. It seems like every layer that you do, it's a little easier to to apply and get the excess off. So we're on our second layer. Now we're going to stick this one in the oven again for one hour at 500 degrees and we'll check it out when we get it out. Okay, we've got it out. After our second layer, while it was still hot, somewhere around 200 and 250 degrees. We're applying our Buzzy Wax again for our third round. This is our second coat of Buzzy Wax. And we're using our baster again and our melted Buzzy Wax in our small container. This little uh, applicator is the way to go when it comes to gym pans. I have seen other people use Pam oven spray or different kinds of oven uh, non-stick sprays and they work good as well but I'm really fond of Buzzy Wax so I'm going to use Buzzy Wax on mine. I just like the finish that it gives and I just like it all together. Okay we're going to pop this one back in the oven at 500 degrees for one more round of seasoning for one hour. Well, I'll tell you what, this piece turned out really, really nice. And I'm telling you, after only three layers of seasoning, we put one layer of grapeseed oil and two layers of Buzzy Wax. And I'm telling you what, it turned out really nice. I was going to sell it, but I think I'm going to keep it. I think this is going to turn out to be a nice little piece for my collection. And I'm really glad it turned out as good as it did. So uh, I hope that you learned something uh, from this and you found a process that you can use even though you may not have an electrolysis tank or a, you know, a big uh, elaborate system to clean cast iron. This could be done with just maybe a, a quart or less of vinegar. I hope that you enjoyed the video and I appreciate you for watching. And if you have, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, that way you'll be informed of all new videos when they come out. You don't want to miss out on anything. So I appreciate you so much and thank you again for watching the Cast Iron Cookwire channel.